Hello, my friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Thank you guys so much for joining us once again. So you may have heard that they have discovered this amazingly hot barrier at the edge of our solar system. As you see here, if we look at the sun, uh, being very dramatic about it, deadly 50,000 degree centigrade wall of fire surrounding our solar system discovered by NASA probe. So a bubble of super hot gloop <laughs> surrounds our solar system and a NASA probe is stuck in it. A giant wall of fire is made up of material ejected by our sun and temperatures reach nearly 90,000 degrees Fahrenheit. And so at the outer edge of the solar system lurks a barrier of super hot plasma. And NASA believes its Voyager 2 probe is stuck in this hellscape, as they are saying it. So, you know, Voyager 1 and 2 both were launched uh, fairly close together back in 77, uh, I believe. And, you know, they took different trajectories, slightly different trajectories, and they made it now, supposedly, again. Uh, we question everything. We are being told that they found this giant wall of hot plasma. Now, m many take this to be a sign that the electric universe theory is correct, and it does make more sense to me than the current model that we are taught. And I was watching uh, Rex and Cliff High uh, over on Leak Project because so many of you had mentioned it, so I went and checked it out and listened to the whole interview. Um, and so, you know, uh, Cliff's take on it was more like, well, this explains uh, why we don't have any aliens visiting us or we have no history of aliens visiting us, although I will debate that uh, for sure uh, because I think there's tons of evidence. But again, the, the majority could be all interdimensional as well. So, you know, whether it's truly extraterrestrial, which even if they were from you know, Mars or Venus or Jupiter or, or, you know, any of these other planets, they would still technically be extraterrestrial, not necessarily from with uh, outside of our solar system. But some are taking this that this is absolutely impenetrable and nothing could come in and out or go out. Um, but according to NASA, that's not really necessarily the case uh, because of the density. And there is uh, a good video, it was here on Nerdist, uh, Anton Petrov explains nicely uh, exactly what it encountered. And because of the density, they do expect both to be gone and outside into interstellar space. And so not, not necessarily um, a reason to think that there could not be anything entering our solar system or that we are completely trapped here either now again you know do we trust nasa and noaa no <laughs> i mean i don't think most of us do uh that are watching this channel uh, but of course the mainstream probably most people do you know just simply take without questioning now what's really interesting in this you know part of this is to me confirmation again of the old axiom as above so below as within so without uh it's it's fascinating how we see the reflection of things yeah you know, we are in a fractal universe and uh, at the same time this also to me when we're talking about the concept of the ether so we're equating the plasma to the ether and really a lot of our science for sure has been all about purposeful misdirection because they don't want us understanding really how things work, how we can affect things in a positive way, how things like free energy, really, it, it could be there for all of us. And really what it would do is change the ability of certain powers that be to actually control us and control our trajectory as we go through space here. Um, interestingly enough, if you think about the double helix, um, it, it's fascinating to see that the motion of the planets is much like that. 
So it's a helical motion. And so what we're getting, and I do agree with what Cliff was saying here, is that really our sun is more like, it really is, like a comet. And we are, uh, all the planets are following behind it. And so what we're seeing here is more like the coma of a, of a comet and also, you know, the tail extending backwards. Very, very interesting. I've made that reference to the fact of comets and asteroids recently in videos kind of almost being like a sperm, you know, swimming on down, going to fertilize the egg, right? And so in one sense, you could kind of get that visualization again when we look at how uh, a comet's shape is, and then our own sun perhaps is just the same as it's transversing through its regular orbit. Pretty interesting stuff when we look closely. And um, this was a fascinating discovery. And so very high temperatures, higher than they were expecting. Now they're saying also that there probably is a lot more uh, galactic radiation outside of our bubble that we are in. But what's interesting is that, you know, the bubble itself is rather porous if we look at uh, some findings. And so I have a lot of links here for you guys to go and, you know, do your own reading, make your own conclusions as well. And this is about Voyager 2, 42 years later. And so this is five things that we've learned since Voyager 2 left the solar system. And um, as we know, let's see, Voyager 2 was launched on August 20th, 1977, 16 days before its twin, Voyager 1. For whatever reason, yeah, they named the, the second one <laughs> number one and the first one number two. Hey, it's NASA, right? Never a straight answer. And so it's fascinating uh, to see this. And okay, one of the takeaways that they got is the bubble is leaking both ways. Voyagers 2 exit from the bubble was not without surprises. According to the data, the bubble was very leaky. So says Stamatios Krimigis of John Hopkins University, lead author of one of the new papers. Material from the solar bubble was discovered in interstellar space. Voyager 1 had actually found signs of a leaky bubble as well. In that instance, however, interstellar material was found streaming into the bubble. The opposite of what Voyager 2 discovered, says Edward Stone of Caltech, lead author of a different paper. The new findings confirm that the leakiness of the heliopause, spotted in two very different parts of the heliosphere, is not a rare characteristic of the bubble, although there is still no real explanation for what's causing it. So the boundary of the bubble is more uniform than we thought. Before the Voyager missions, scientists predicted that the solar bubble might just sort of dissolve into interstellar space as you ventured farther and farther from the sun. Voyager 2 seems to confirm that, in fact, there's a very, very sharp boundary there. Just a, a clear uh, line, so to speak. And so Voyager 2's plasma wave instrument ended up measuring plasma densities that were very much on a par with what Voyager 1 had detected. Be because solar plasma is so hot, about a million degrees centigrade, and interstellar plasma is incredibly cold, just 10,000 degrees centigrade, the density of plasma jumps up by a factor between 20 and 50 as you cross the border. And that's a characteristic of fluids, which oftentimes form very sharp boundaries. So interesting, the makeup of the heliopause itself can vary by location, and the sun's influence goes beyond our solar system, which you know makes sense because we, we do see stars as well, right? Um, this was the Voyager program's final major milestone as well. So all this was interesting because you know we see some different takes on certain things. And this is going back uh, to when Voyager 1 had left, because it left first and they were thinking it was a boundary of hydrogen and so it's plasma and here we're getting a, a view of the area that we're talking about and then beyond this we have 
the Oort cloud way out there as well. So, you know, if it is an impenetrable barrier, then what about Oumuamua, which was the first interstellar object? If it was impenetrable, then how did this come in? Or are they lying to us about this? Either is a possibility. Um, you know, it's, it's just the way it is. This was a, a very curious object which behaved very much like a spaceship. And, uh, although, you know, some scientists even came out and said it was. They thought it probably was. And then, of course, others say no. And then there's other interstellar objects as well. Now we're talking about Comet 21 Borisov, the second known interstellar object to visit our solar system. Um, again, so are they truly interstellar, or are we within this impenetrable barrier that you can't get within or without? Again, it's up to each of us to make up that our minds on these things. So Tesla talked about the ether, and um, you know this is what a lot of people are taking out of this, that it is confirmation of the ether, and the ether makes a lot of sense to me, uh, coming from the Western mystery tradition, where it's so talked about, it's just a given, and so much of the Western mystery tradition really comes out of yoga and the Vedic texts as well, and so we see Tesla's most suppressed work, and for you know information that was even more classified than the atomic bomb, every single copy destroyed. And it explained the causes and motions of heavenly bodies under its influence so satisfactorily that it will put an end to idle speculation and false conception, such as that out of curved space. Only the existence of a field of force can account for the motions of the bodies as observed. And its assumption dispenses with space curvature. All literature on this subject is futile and destined to oblivion. So Spiral attempts to explain the workings of the universe without recognizing the existence of the ether and the indispensable function it plays in the phenomenon. And that's Nikola Tesla. And we see again, out of the Western mystery tradition, uh, alchemy. You know, out of the darkness into the light, right? Different elements, earth, air, fire, water, which we all know about, and then spirit, or quintessence, or we may call it the ether, as well. And then when we look over here, again, this is more from hermetics, uh, hermeticism, um, and different occult traditions recognize these symbols symbolizing the different elements, including the ether, the fifth element, which, in which, the attributes of all other states have their basis. So the more and more we're learning, to me, it's all basically verifying everything we knew in the Western mystery tradition, and then, of course, over in the East. And Ayurvedic, five elements, again, and Akash, which is either, and then the four that we're very familiar with. Fascinating, too, to see the way a cell structure is, because we're talking about as above, so below. You see you have these different barriers, these different walls, which, you know, may appear to be impenetrable on some level, but as we go and, and get down into smaller and smaller level, levels, they are not really totally impenetrable. And it's fascinating that we find a plasma membrane there, again, as above, so below plasma membrane interesting right it's just a re everything is a reflection of everything else this is how this multiverse works in many people's opinion and we've seen this the brain cell and the universe they are so much alike the birth of a cell and the death of a star again cellular mitosis and seeing a nova event very 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 interesting to say the least, and then an eye and a nebula. And as we were talking about, we're going through a nebula right now, according to, according to some, you know, the photon belt. So I just wanted to share this with you guys. Very interesting stuff. As always, my friends, thank you for your support on Ko-Fi and Patreon. Make sure to subscribe. If you haven't subscribed, click the bell for all the notifications. And I look forward to your comments on this. As always, God bless and namaste.